Hello everyone and welcome back. I'm Davina Shep, a singer songwriter, former fashion designer, and most of all, painter. On this channel, we talk about art, design, style, culture, music. And today we're having a look at three female contemporary artists. I chose these three artists because I feel like there are some similarities in the themes and the ideas in the paintings, the way that they create, why they create, even though the styles of the works are very different. So I thought this could be interesting. So she's London based, her exhibitions have mostly been in the UK, she is part of prestigious collections, she has been published, has had awards, so she is very advanced in her career, like the other artists that we will have a look at. She works with oil, she works on paper and canvas. I thought her artist statement was quite interesting because she starts with talking about the horror that she felt as a child watching on the news the Charles Manson story. Charles Manson! And the photo of the family which seemed to be in an enchanted place. And this trauma is kind of the beginning of her work. So she is focusing on family, the dysfunctions of family, and she puts her characters in enchanted places that are very fairy tale like, that represent psychosis. Sorry, did you say psychosis? She is inspired by folk tradition. The landscapes seem very innocent, very childlike. Go on. But just like in a fairy tale, there is this dark force, something mysterious happening. So it's really about family, its dysfunction, and its repression. Her female characters appear to be queen-like. They are creative and powerful, whereas the men are portrayed either as princes to make fun of the ideal man or as patriarchs. What I find very interesting is that you cannot really pin down what is a bit dark or weird, strange in the paintings because the colors are quite bright, quite pastel, but there's just always something. The characters are quite isolated or they are running from something. I guess it's a mood, it's a feeling that even though it kind of looks ideal and enchanted, there is this dysfunction, this psychosis hiding in it. Uh-huh. So the second artist is Sarah Jerome. She's French. I really love this book. I bought it at the Palais de Tokyo in Paris. Yeah, let me show you some of her work. So she works on tracing paper mainly and oil and oil uh, and tracing paper are not supposed to mix she starts her paintings dropping oil on this tracing paper and creating a type of mud and the images will appear out of that Stajom used to be a dancer a professional dancer from the ages of seven up to she was 20 and it is a very important theme in her work it is also very 19th uh, century in inspired, very romantic, very Eugène de la Croix with a lot of flesh, a lot of body parts that seem to be in total devotion, uh, giving themselves out or lifeless. And it's very coherent with the way that she sculpted her own body throughout these years being a dancer. The body always seemed to be either in movement or suffering. Other parallels between her history as a dancer and art is the way that she treats grace. It seems to be synonym of torture. Dance is beauty, art is beauty, but it is also submission, restriction. She explores these themes in her paintings. It's like we're in between a dream and a nightmare and the body always seems kind of monstrous or something monstrous is happening. Mm -hmm. Tell me more. Maria Berio. She's a Colombian artist, she lives in New York. She actually doesn't paint, she does collages with Japanese papers. Her pieces are very dense because of all of that pattern and she portrays very strong and layered women. Some of her themes include our relationship with the environment and nature and how technology has disrupted that, disconnected us from that, and immigration. She has some references to some political events under the Trump administration. So as an immigrant herself, it's a theme that she explores as well. Also, this is quite interesting with the way that she treats the landscapes. It's, as she puts it, Colombia is a dreamlike memory. And this 
dreamlike memory appears to be these landscapes and those pieces. Her work has been referred to as magical realism because the settings are very recognizable. You recognize woods, you recognize the landscapes, but they have a magical component to them, a fantasy component to them. She is also inspired by folk art from Southern America. The characters are, seem to be quite motherly. They have ghost-like faces because she, on the contrary of Sarah Jerome, wants the flesh to almost not be there. So it's kind of an allegory of motherhood and womanhood in general. They also seem to be quite restricted in their movements. That is quite interesting in her nightingales, where these women have one arm that's become a wing. So they have this thing that makes them special, but at the same time, it prevents them to be free. So flora, fauna, and myths are very important in her work. Her settings appear to be utopian uh, refuges. And she's actually having a solo institutional exhibition right now at the Norton Museum of Art. So what I find quite interesting in her work is the symbolism, the tiger, the rootless tree representing her as a, being an immigrant. And I also really love that the characters are really looking at the viewer directly. They appear very courageous, very brave, and just fearless. So in these three artists, I feel like there's a quite important notion of just womanhood as a theme. It is explored in very different ways. Eleanor Morton and Maria Berrio are both quite inspired by myths, fairy tales. They have this dreamlike quality to their pieces. Sarah Jerome creates these dreamlike moments where the body and flesh are is the main character and women are being used and looked at. She actually said that she was traumatized by all of these years having to audition and feeling humiliated uh, as a dancer, being judged by people all the time uh, for her body and just being traumatized about how she treated her own body. So in these three artists' work, it seems to be quite interesting to see how they, through their characters, place women in the environment, in a relationship to family, in a relationship to men in general, and in a relationship to themselves. As an artist, I found this very interesting because a lot of these themes and questions and uh, things that they explore, I also explore in my work. And it just makes me question, do we always paint or create out of trauma? Do we fantasize about trauma? Or are we trying to escape from it? Referencing it surely keeps it alive. So what is it that we're trying to do here when we create something? Is it just a masochist act, a self-inflicted torment of the past? Or is the trauma slipping its way through into the painting while we are actually trying to escape? from these things. I guess like in Sarah Jerome's work, does it mean that beauty, grace, is only here because we have been torturing ourselves? Is it a threatening beauty or is it a relief? I remember listening to an interview of Matisse where he says that the painter's job is not to create more anguish, but to work on himself enough so that he can actually relieve the viewer. I've always used that as a compass to my own work. I feel that it makes it safer to create and I feel that using myths, stories, references, it makes it less personal and it enables imagination. So maybe we don't actually need to be that traumatized. Maybe we just need to understand those things and to be in tuned enough with those things in ourselves or to be able to see it in other people to paint it or depict it truthfully. Questions, no answers. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Bye bye. Trauma. Well, 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 well. In my professional opinion, there is no bigger trauma than being teared out of your mama's you-know-what. Why do you want to always go back to this and sent into this oblivion? This is not helping at all. I mean, talking about an endless cycle, were we asked? No, we were not. Did, was it a choice? No, it was not. I hate talking to you. To be set on this earth with a genetical pre-programmed set of neurosis and psychosis and whatnot. Talking about trauma. Great, this is just great. <laughs>